There have been some very, very weird sports games that have been made. You got a game starring Michael Jordan where you're dribbling around, killing spiders and zombies. You got a Kinect game, remember that? <laughs> that stars a pitcher who throws baseballs at demonic hordes of enemies. But this game is probably the most out there concept. Jerry Rice and Nidus's dog football. Now let's just take a second to comprehend this. Jerry Rice and Nidus's dog football. A game where dogs are being controlled by some stereotype or caricature to play football and do other dog stuff. Okay, what's the deal with this game? And why is NFL Hall of Fame wide receiver Jerry Rice involved in this? Trying to find information on this game is surprisingly rough. Okay, there aren't going to be any more dog puns, sorry. Looking at Jerry Rice's Wikipedia page, there's only one sentence about it, and the game itself doesn't even have a Wikipedia page. The developer behind the game is called Judo Baby. The guys behind such great games such as... Jerry Rice and Nidus' Dog Football. Heading over to Judo Baby's website is like a blast from the past because this website design is so 2000s, it made me think of the movie Shark Tale. Checking out their game section, they haven't made anything else. Although they do have a game in development called Dino Dogs, which stars former NFL running back Marshawn Lynch. What is with this weird combination of using former NFL athletes and dogs? Well, let's hope they don't use Michael Vick in a future game. Anyway, Jerry Rice did some promotional interviews to try and sell the game, and he is completely dumbfounded on how to do so. Well, you know, Jerry Jerry Rice and Nidus football is about my dog and and myself and the thing is you know we wanted to uh, along with judo baby we wanted to uh, and uh, you know and uh, you know from uh, you can go to uh, GameStop you know to uh, you know pick the game up and with this game here uh, you know females they can actually play also the graphics that's you know that's really what this is all about oh the the graphics are the selling point? <laughs> the graphics are good. Oh, okay. Family, 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 family. I am so proud of our team at Judo Baby for the high quality football that they have put into this game and for creating a fun experience for the whole family and their pets. Oh, your your pets can enjoy it too? Wanna play Jerry Rice and Nidus' dog football? Come on, they said even animals can play, come on. We'll be looking for you. That's the most threatening thing I've heard all year. In terms of the actual game, the main mode you'll be spending time in is Season Mode, with the goal being to win a bunch of games to eventually win the Golden Hydrant. When playing a game, you'll notice one thing, and that's... The graphics. That's, you know, that's really what this is all about. But you also notice how terrible the control is. This was initially a Wii game that was ported over to PC, so you have to use the mouse to guide this dog bone cursor and the dog will head over in that direction, kinda. Trying to move like this is a little unpredictable and sometimes you don't even know where you're gonna go. It's like, it's like, it's like trying to control a dog, actually. I guess they got me there. Throwing the ball is as simple as a left click when the dog barks. It's all yours! There are some variables, like you can give your dog a treat and that gives them higher catch probability or it makes them harder to tackle. Honestly, I do have to give credit with some things. There are 12 different fields to play on and they're actually all different. They're not just the same field with just a different set dressing like you'll find on so many other football games. Each field has different things to hop on, run through, or run under. There are even exclusive paths to take for smaller dogs. You can also run with a human quarterback who, by the way, is very annoying. But they can't do all the things a dog can do. You can even find presents, which contain certain cosmetics or other items. It's also cute to watch the dogs goof around at the end of each quarter. <laughs> Another thing is ARF points. 
Going to these obstacles gives you ARF points. When scoring a touchdown, you have an option of kicking it in for half the ARF points you acquired on the drive, which by the way, I think my kicking meter was glitched or something. That or maybe my PC just can't handle the graphics. Or you could try and pass it in for all of the ARF points you acquired on the drive. This opens up some strategy, believe it or not, especially if you're behind. I'd love to see some newer arcade football games try and use these elements, especially the obstacle elements, because in every football game, all the fields are essentially the same. It could give some much needed variety. It's also pretty cute that you can adopt dogs and dress them up. Once you get past the novelty, the game gets pretty old pretty fast. Playing defense with these controls is the exact opposite of a good time. The characters are all forgettable and annoying, except this guy who's totally supposed to be Fat Bastard from Austin Powers. Get in my end zone. The music can be ear piercingly bad. Stop that arf attempt. The only fun I had with it was running out in the open field and interacting with the previously mentioned obstacles. The fact that the PC version doesn't even have a normal controls and just mimics the Wii's motion controls with the mouse should be a federal offense, honestly. It just shows how completely lazy this port job was. If you're gonna port a game over to PC, have the decency to give us a real control scheme. Can you imagine holding your arm up and moving around with the motion controls while playing this? You could pick up any football game that was released in the last 40 years and it would control better. Yes, even Bugs vs. Daffy in the big game. At least the game has cheat codes, but these are the lamest cheat codes in video game history. Now this cheat code here, this cheat code lets you watch the credits. This cheat lets you watch a CPU versus CPU game. In what way is that a cheat? And this one lets you pick a generic football field. So you know the one main thing I praised the game about? Well, now you can use a cheat code to take that away. These are cheats in the same way as you getting socks for Christmas. I want to dispel this notion that the pre-release videos keep bringing up, and likely something that a lot of people watching might bring up as well. This game's for kids, so it's fine, right? Well, no. Just because something is meant for the younger demographic doesn't mean you could just fling out any mediocre shovelware and it's automatically fine. Kids' standards are lower, that's true, but kids still have taste. Ever wonder why Spongebob is popular and not something like, I don't know, Coconut Fred? despite the two shows being very similar? Because kids aren't knuckle-dragging goofs with no thoughts of their own. This could be the best new game for a child who loves dogs but not sports dad but wants them desperately to Hey man, you want to know how I got into football? I actually played Madden. That's right, and admittedly I didn't understand the intricacies of the sport of football, but I understood that you needed to get the ball in the end zone. Despite the weird nature of the concept of dogs playing football, I have nothing against that. I'm just tired of people using the it's meant for kids argument to excuse a bad piece of media. After the release of Jerry Rice and Ninus's dog football, the game is sort of a meme. The only legacy that this game has left behind is being a meme in a couple of Donkey's videos and the annual Puppy Bowl that the new Legacy Inc. boys do. The developer Judo Baby received $4.2 million in backing from shareholders. I guess you could see how they got Jerry Rice to be a part of this now. It's all about the graphics. That's, you know, that's really what this is all about. Judo Baby created the PSL, a league that mixes both pets and sports, with dog football being the only game that has been made, and the game is over a decade old now. Like I mentioned earlier, Judo Baby was working on a game called Dino Dogs, but the game was scheduled for a 2018 release, and uh, much like the dinosaurs themselves, the game is probably extinct. <laughs> It's not officially cancelled though, so who knows. It seems like they had big plans for these pet games and this pet league, but this development studio has been MIA since Charlie Sheen dropped the Tiger Blood interview. Winning 
I went here and I went there. Overall, Jerry Rice and Nidus' dog football is just a novel concept that's largely mediocre as a whole. I very much still recommend checking it out because it only costs $3. That's less than a meal at like McDonald's. You spend $3 on coffee every day anyway, so replace coffee with Jerry Rice. The most important thing here is not the dogs, Judo Baby, Jerry Rice, Nidus, you, me, or this video. It's the graphics. That's, you know, that's really what this is all about. The WWF Betrayal is on the Game Boy, and despite how it looks, it's not a wrestling game. You pick your guy, you hear a nice 8-bit rendition of their theme, Then the story starts. So The Rock is about to win the title, but then Stone Cold hits him with his signature weapon, a trash can. <laughs> After that, Vince talks to Rock and tells him Stephanie's been kidnapped. And if he gets her back, The Rock gets a shot at the title. So we go on to beat the shit out of everyone who stands in our way. Refs, security guards, Luigi with no mustache, Solid Snake, guys with the machine gun suitcases, and hookers. With this many security guards, I find it hard to believe you could steal Tic Tacs undetected, let alone a whole ass person. Honestly, this story reminds me of WrestleMania 19 on a GameCube. Your wrestler gets fired and then you go around beating the shit out of and murdering innocent construction workers that are just trying to do their jobs. I'm not exaggerating with the murdering part either. Anyway, you have a punch and a kick. If you land enough in succession, you get to do a finisher. In this case, a rock bottom. I recommend doing the running drop kick all the time because it does the most damage. You have weapons like pipes, wrenches, and nightsticks. No chairs, funny enough. I like how he swings the weapon. <laughs> I also like the rock's walking animation. What's up with all this sass? His arms swing with more power when he's walking than his punches do. We make our way through the parking lot and we see Austin stuffing Stephanie into the car. We face Austin in an encounter that's better than all three of their WrestleMania matches combined. Next we're on a train and these suitcase machine gun guys can burn in the deepest pits of hell. So we get out of the train and we run into Big Daddy Cool Diesel. <laughs> Just kidding, it's The Undertaker. We beat him and he tells us Steph is at Titan Towers. We go there, we beat up everyone, and then Austin surprises us with multiple RKOs. Slithering oh, watch, like out, watch, out, watch out, watch out, watch out, watch out! We take care of him and reach the final room. And Vince was behind the whole thing. It's me, The Rock. Oh, son of a bitch. What? It's me, The Rock. It was me all along. It was a setup to kill The Rock, I guess. He sicks The Undertaker on us and we beat him with this weird slam thing. What the fuck is that? We get to the roof and Triple H puts his title on the line and we fight. I do this weird slam thing again, and that's it. I beat the game in half an hour. You can play as the other three wrestlers, but everyone plays the exact same minus the finishing move. Even the story seems to be the same with just the wrestlers swapped around. Maybe there's a Sonic Adventure-esque secret final story if you beat the game with all four wrestlers. But eh, uh, I'm good. Many Madden games have been on the Wii, but we'll look at Madden 09 All Play just because it has a different name. Now, I already know what you're thinking. This is just a dumbed down version of Madden that has gimmicky Wii controls. And you'd be 100% WRONG! Well, not really. There's gimmicky Wii controls here, but the game isn't really dumbed down at all. The Wii games aim for a younger audience, so that's why on the cover they have young up-and-coming superstar Brett Favre. I think the number on his jersey represents how many times he's retired. All jokes aside, the game is fun. In terms of gameplay, it's the Madden you all know and love, but with weak controls. The pass off. This one, the wide receiver breaks three of the defender. The 40. The motion stuff here is fine and never feels like it overstays its welcome. You could do stuff like pulling the Wiimote back to hike the ball, pushing it forward to pass, and thrusting it forward for bigger hits. It works well. 
There are some other things you could do like this call your shots thing. With the Wiimote, you can draw out a route for your receivers, but not just one receiver, every receiver. It's completely overpowered as shit, but hey, it's a Wii game, it's fun to use. Then there's the greatest feature that every sports game should come out with. Of course, I'm talking about the Telestrator, baby, yeah. Look at this, I'm rushing one, two, three, four, five, six guys at the quarterback. Call the funeral service because it's safe to assume this guy has a date with a coffin. But here's the thing, I lied because I actually sent eight people at the quarterback. Give me that fucking rock! Give me that! Okay, here's a scoring play. You see this guy, this guy right here? Don't pay any attention to him. I don't even know why I pointed him out. This guy over here though, He's gonna run straight across the field here. And this man right here, he's the king. You, you see the crown I drew? That's a crown. This man's gonna throw the football over here. See the football I drew? That, that's a football. He's gonna catch it and he's gonna go into the end zone for the touchdown. See, look at that, just how I drew it up. The main area where this game succeeds is where this one fails. It's the game features. You have everything you'd expect here. You have all those fun minicam games, from quarterback passing to running to stopping the run. You have a multitude of mini games. You could play two on two, have a kicking competition and a yards competition. You have five on five with big old heads. Don't make a play. You have franchise mode, and it's actually a franchise mode with most of the bells and whistles you'd expect. You even have the superstar career mode. Look, you can even take an IQ test. Sixty percent. Well, you guys aren't here for my academic prowess, I hope. Finally, you have party mode, which I'd love to show you, but two players are required and I don't have any friends. Looks like you're a born loser! Once upon a time, 2K Sports actually made baseball games. Wow, 10 years ago, I'm feeling pretty old. They eventually went with making an arcade series called The Bigs. Picked up by Kuzmano. On first. Which takes the players, injects them with more steroids than Barry Bonds, and have them do insane stuff. They were reminiscent of the MLB Slugfest games, although you can't knee a guy in the balls and run away. These games were fun, and they would get a sequel with the Bigs too. Looks like we have ourselves a new series of baseball games. What could they do for the third game? This is disgusting. So uh, we get Nicktoons MLB. Definitely one of the odder looking titles out there. It's like Space Jam, but instead of Looney Tunes, it's Nicktoons. And instead of Michael Jordan, it's uh, Andre Ethier. Nicktoons MLB has 24 Nicktoon characters to choose from. The character roster is Pretty disappointing. Whoa, did you guys hear that voice crack? Now I stopped watching Nickelodeon like in 2009 or something. So I'm not gonna stand here and tell you what a fanboy or a chum chum is. But this roster is lacking. Why are Squidward and Mr. Krabs overlooked for the Flying Dutchman and freaking Larry the Lobster? His boring ass? I work out. Sheen and Ultralord are in the game, but no Jimmy Neutron. Why? There's a lack of classic characters here. No Rugrats, Fairly Odd Parents, Rocco's Modern Life. What a ripoff! I told you. No Hey Arnold! It's a baseball game! Hey Arnold had like 10 baseball episodes. Gerald Field could have been a field in the game. Mickey K. Line could have been a character, come on! I guess you can make an argument that this game is only featuring modern characters, but this game has characters from Ren and Stimpy, Invader Zim, and Danny Phantom. Shows that were long gone when this game was made. Hey, at least we got this guy. The monkey! <laughs> characters that aren't represented in the actual game itself get these little loading screens. And hey, maybe it's a good thing those characters aren't in the game anyway. Because presentation wise, this game is, uh, oh boy. So there are Nicktoon themed stadiums to choose from. 
I don't think Aang would be happy that the air temples were reconstructed for baseball, but whatever. The real shitty part here is that there are only six MLB stadiums. What happened? Wrigley, Fenway, Yankee Stadium, Dodger Stadium, AT&T, and of all places, Rangers Ballpark. <laughs> I'm guessing they were only going for the most iconic and best looking stadiums. But the Rangers? Huh? The hell? For the most part, both the Nicktoons and MLB stadiums look fine. I just wish there was more of them. Nothing says Mets versus Diamondbacks like Fenway Park. Character models, on the other hand, look completely cursed. I understand that most 2D characters would have a rough transition when going to a 3D environment, but some of these guys could have been done a little bit better or a lot a bit better. Powdered Toastman is just... Ew. And SpongeBob. Damn, boy, he's thick, boy! The same sponge that was smaller than his buddy Patrick can now engulf him if he wanted to. Why is Katara white? What is she, the Katara from the shitty Last Airbender movie? The monks named me Ong. Boy, no they didn't. You are a dumb ass. It's just nasty. Look at how these odd ass looking characters move and animate. It's gross. When they come up to bat, it's fine. It actually looks pretty decent. Stepping in for the first time today, Patrick Star. But in the actual gameplay, they use the same human-like mocap animations as the MLB players. This is fine for like the avatar characters because they themselves are just realistic shaped humans. But when you have characters like Invader Zim and Patrick doing stuff like this, it just looks odd. It reminds me of Sonic 06 animation or that one movie with all the product placement. I forgot what it's called. The game does have commentary, believe it or not, by Perch Perkins from SpongeBob and Gurr from Invader Zim. And it's as bad as you'd expect. Yeah, that's really funny, Gurr. <laughs> it's so funny, I'm gonna turn the commentary off forever. Gameplay is essentially the big stew. From batting to pitching to the star ratings, there isn't much different that this game does. In Exhibition, you select your team and it could be a real MLB team or a fake team with these punny joke names like Homer Run and Jose Can You See. That was funny stuff. After that, you select Nicktoons to fill random positions. You pitch with these over-exaggerated pitches. Four. Batters have a hot zone. If the ball is thrown there, you have more of a chance to get a hit. But if you miss it, that hot zone shrinks. Whenever a ball is in play, you have a chance to do some crazy shit. Most of these things are just simple presses of the A button, but sometimes you get a little mini game where you press buttons in a sequence or you hold a button until a certain amount of time. Throughout the game, you earn turbo. You can use this to run faster, throw harder, use a bar for a special pitch, or use it for the only real reason you should, to hit an automatic dinger. Do you want to know the terrifying truth? Or do you want to see me sock a few dingers? Dingers! dingers. <laughs> when hitting these home runs, you have unique things happen in both the real stadiums and the Nicktoons ones. This works well for the most part. I mean, batting is a little finicky because sometimes I feel like I miss the ball completely, but I get a hit anyway, but it's fine. There's just one problem for me. This is essentially the bigs with Nicktoon characters. Nothing separates this game from it. No special powers, no nothing. There are multiple game modes, but they don't amount to much. There's a tournament mode where you pick one team and play the best of three series. If you pick an MLB team, you just play against other MLB teams. So essentially what I'm saying is, without the Nicktoons, you're just playing a gimped version of the bigs. So why even bother? Then there's a mode where you choose between two teams. One drafts Nicktoons, the other drafts MLB players. I'm really stretching the term game mode here. It's like if I were to call Mountain Dew a beverage. Something that's actually different is this thing called distance derby. You pick a batter and aim for targets. It's shallow like this puddle or my standards for making a good video, 
but at least it's different. By the way, how can a blind girl play baseball? The only other thing is these unlockable baseball cards, and they're just worthless. So I guess the end game here is you work towards collecting these cards. Sounds like it's almost as pointless as the girls in Def Jam Vendetta, but at least there I have something to look at. Like, what am I gonna do with Squidward? So I know what you're thinking. Hey man, this game's for kids. Lay off. Well, guess what? You, my friend, are wrong! This game is rated E for everyone, meaning everyone can play it. You can play it. I can play it. Even Freak over here can play it. I grew up with so many E for everyone games that were for kids and adults alike. There's no reason why this game can't be held up to these standards. And there's no reason why Nicktoons MLB has less features than the DVD menu of Spider-Man 2. And why is it featureless? Well, allow me to use deductive reasoning. 2K had exclusivity for the MLB license, but there's a problem with that. Their games weren't selling. The MLB The Show series was a better alternative, and the 2K games weren't really all that good. What the fuck? They were losing money on each MLB game, which is why they went to any lengths to sell their baseball games. One million dollar challenges and bundles with the NBA games. The MLB license was losing 2K money at this point. So here is where Nicktoons MLB comes in. They have the engine from the bigs, so just slap Nicktoons characters on it for a quick cash grab. It doesn't matter if it's good or not, they just have to make a profit at this point before their MLB license can expire. A couple years later and the MLB license did expire, leaving Nicktoons MLB as a curious thing in sports gaming history. Nicktoons MLB is not a good game. At best, I would give it to a child to distract them, but it would probably only distract them for like 10 minutes before they find a better game on their phone. I would just recommend playing the bigs too, because it has way more features and game modes and it's way more polished. With some effort, they could have made this a classic sports cartoon game that we've all could have come back to like, uh, Toon Hoops on CartoonNetwork.com, I guess, I don't know. Moving on to DOS, we have the second weirdest basketball related game I've ever played. Michael Jordan in Flight is a game starring Michael Jordan with no NBA teams. Jordan owned the right to his name and likeness, so he wasn't a part of the NBA PA. If you had to make a Michael Jordan game, you had to deal directly with the man himself. And it appears they blew all of their budget on securing Jordan's likeness because the actual game is bad. You can only control Jordan himself, and you're playing in this endless black void where nothing exists except basketball. Like seriously, I wonder if this is the same realm where the GameCube console menu is at. In space, no one can hear you scream, but they can hear the basketball bouncing. That shit transcends space and time. This, the net, the rim when you miss a shot and the crowd, which sounds like the ocean. These are the only sounds during gameplay. Controlling the game is the biggest problem. You don't move around with the keys, you guide Jordan with the mouse, and this just makes you cha-cha slide all over the place with no hope of stopping, especially since the camera always follows the ball and it's constantly moving itself. It's hard to play defense when it looks like I'm a damn dog with the zoomies. The game has all of these options like running plays, subbing in and out players and whatnot, but it's not really worth it because the base game is so bad. Even a presentation is nothing special. Watch what happens when you make a three-pointer. You mean to tell me you couldn't edit in a soundbite of Jordan saying anything? You can't throw in any audio at all? Look, I can even make it better myself. Baba Bowie. There's a tournament mode here and that's really it. I give the game props for attempting a 3D game, but it's probably the worst basketball game you can seek out and play. Much like the void the players are in, the game is empty.
Maybe I'm too harsh. The only other review I can find of this game is from an old magazine archive that states the game has photorealistic graphics. Man, it's like I can't tell which is the game and which is real life. Somebody help me out there. So do you remember when I said the last game was the second weirdest basketball game ever? Well, here's the first. Michael Jordan Chaos in the Windy City is not even a basketball game. Yes, you control Jordan. Yes, he's dribbling a basketball. Yes, he can dunk. But like, this is a platformer where you do all those things. So the story starts out the evil mad scientist Maximus Cranium kidnapped Jordan's teammates and instead of calling law enforcement, Jordan decides to take matters into his own hands and save his teammates and defeat the evil mastermind all while never traveling. Once you get over the insane Shaq Fu-esque theme of the game, you'd find a solid game here. The game is non-linear. Instead of heading to the right of the screen to reach the end, you have to search these big levels to look through doors and dunk basketballs to get items like keys, which then lead to you opening doors to find your teammates. There are hordes of monsters to stop you. How do you defeat them? Guns? No. Blades? No. Magic? No. If you'd guess basketballs, you have problems but you're also correct in this instance. Jordan just chucks these basketballs at enemies until they die. There are many different basketballs to use as weapons. Flaming basketballs, ice basketballs, basketball baseballs. I guess the movie Basketball was ahead of its time. I thought a decent portion of these were worthless until I discovered that throwing them on the ground causes different effects like these golden balls break apart into many different smaller balls. Geez, the amount of times I said Michael Jordan or basketball in this video is truly astonishing. Well anyway, this game is pretty damn hard. It's pretty generous with the Gatorade and Wheaties to refill your health. Even then, I'm still struggling here. Part of this has to do with some control issues. This weird delay with controls that makes everything harder than it needs to be, especially when you have to be super precise with this platforming. Also, trying to grab these little zip lines just makes it look like I have an answer to a question in school. I'd say give this a play. It's pretty familiar though. If I had a nickel for every game from the fourth console generation that stars a famous celebrity with the initials MJ going through non-linear platforming levels where you fight hordes of monsters and open countless amounts of doors to save kidnapped victims, I'd have two nickels. Which isn't a lot, but it's weird that it happened twice. Let's look at a baseball game. No. 2020? Yeah, it's actually not that bad. In the sea of 1990s baseball games that all look and feel the same, believe it or not, the futuristic one with robots is able to stand out. Who would have thought? I remember I had a SNES ROM pack and the game 2020 Super Baseball was near the top. It caught my curiosity. I don't know why they settled on the year 2020 though. When we're talking about futuristic sounding years, it's always 2000 that's used. Well, screw 2000. This is 2000 times, uh, 1.01, yeah. I mean, when you turn 2020 upside down, it's 50-50. So maybe that's what they meant and somebody in the marketing team read it wrong? That would explain why I don't have robots and jetpacks in my life right now. And it starts right now. Oh. Oh. 2020 Super Baseball takes some liberties on the sport. Well, let's get the obvious out of the way. There are humans, both male and female, playing baseball with power armor, jetpacks, and sensors. I guess you could say this is performance enhancing? Barry Bonds, you were juicing about two decades too early, my friend. In addition to humans, there's also actual robots. Foul ground has been significantly reduced. You can just hit weak pop flies into the stands, which are now glass, by the way. Hey, no social distancing? And you can get a double off of it. To offset that, you can only hit home runs over the center field wall. See, look, the computer just hit a home run off me. Time to return the favor. That's gone, baby. <laughs> uh... What the hell? There are two leagues of teams to choose from. Most of these teams come from actual places. American Dreams, Tokyo Samurais, Korea Dragoons. But then you got teams like the Ninja Black Sox. Ninja isn't a location as far as I know. 
I just want to know where these ninjas are from, yo. I picked the mechanical brains, a team of one female and the rest of the players being robots. Look, I can make some type of corn joke out of that, but it's too easy. When you finally pick your team, you battle it out with other teams for the best record. As you can imagine, the gameplay is very offensive centric because you know, robots. You can slide and jump with your jetpack to make cool looking plays and yes, these are satisfying. Since my team is all robots, you would think I would have an advantage, but the thing is, robots can blow up if you keep sliding, jumping, pitching, base running, sitting, existing, or literally doing anything. On the other hand, human pitchers get fatigued, but they can do everything else just fine. So jump out to a big lead early with the robots because much like me, they blow their load halfway through. Throughout the game, you earn these points. These points can be spent on power upgrades. You can earn more points by doing nice catches, getting hits, strikeouts. Here's a top secret pro level 2020 baseball tip. Whenever there's a fly ball, just jump before the ball lands. The game counts it as a jumping catch and you get the extra points coming from it. You can upgrade specific players hitting, pitching, fielding arm, or just replace them with a damn robot that covers all three. I normally just do the hitting upgrades for two reasons. One, chicks dig the long ball. And two, see reason one. There can be some tense moments where the game's on the line and you activate your power up, or the opponent does the same. There are some issues I have though. Firstly, the fielding is ass incarnate. You can only control one player at a time, and it's the player the game gives you. So there are instances where the ball is hit right in front of someone, but I have to run over with another player from another damn county to field the ball. Also, it seems first basemen always cover the base rather than fielding the ball. The music is always really the same. It's a catchy tune, but it's the only one you hear the whole time. And the SNES instruments can get a little grating. Also, the game isn't really animated all that well. Frames of animation are missing in a lot of animations, most notably the pitching windup. I've seen better animation on a Captain Underpants flip or rama section. This game is not all that accurate to the year 2020, but considering what the year 2020 ended up being, do you really want it to be? MLB The Show 21 did something groundbreaking. They reminded me that the Foo Fighters still exist. Wow, cool. They also have a stadium creator, which has been long overdue. MVP Baseball 2005 had one, and it was primitive, yes, but the effort was appreciated, especially for a PS2 era game. One would hope that the MLB The Show series would take this and expand upon it with newer hardware, but they never did. In the PS3 and PS4 era, Stadium Creator was MIA, but now on PS5, it's here and it punches you right in the face with all the amount of content and freedom it has. I mean, it's a damn free for all. Adjust the walls, the stands, put UFOs in the sky, have roads, bridges, parking lots. There are no rules. Rules are for losers. You could put a bunch of tiger statues in the stadium and call it Dolphin Stadium if you want. Giving the people this much power is like giving a kid coffee and a BB gun. The game lets you upload your own monstrosities online for others to download. Although it sucks because despite Stadium Creator being heavily promoted, there are no search functions or filters. Like, how can this be an oversight? Come on, I dare you. How dare I? How dare you? Anyway, let's see what kind of madness people have created. Suave Stadium? Well, this place is uh interesting. I like how these stands have gaps in them. It looks like something someone in Wipeout would have to traverse. I mean, I'm just hoping no one falls off. Check out this floating baseball glove in right field. Why is it floating? Here, buddy, let me give you some structure. There we go. Now the stadium with a UFO, a stationary hovering jumbo jet, a bridge that leads to nothing, looks a little less silly now that this glove isn't floating. Next stadium, Tropics Field. This one looks pretty nice. I like the summertime amusement park vibe we got going on here. Park with a water slide and right outside of the stadium, a whole amusement park. I don't know why Big Ben is in the middle of everything though. Seems a bit out of place. Okay, so this is something I found while I was editing. But check out the basketball court. There are dinosaurs there and they're playing basketball. Come on, Raptors playing basketball? Doesn't make any kind of sense. Also, where are we? Looks like there's no civilization in miles. Like, what is this? Baseball Carnival Island? All right, next idiot. Oh my God. Yeet Yards. That's an appropriate name because I feel like brain cells were yeeted out when this place was being made. Go to hell. <laughs> oh! This stadium is anything but normal. 
but let me fix the main problem that's wrong with it. These red walls do not match the rest of the green ones. Let me change that. There we go. Now this can be a major league stadium. Now everything looks good. I mean, why can't every stadium have dinosaurs stacked on each other and zigzaggy outfield walls? Come on, let this man build the A's new stadium. You'll never not know the score with all these scoreboards around, including one on the field of play. Flavor Street. Not the kind of place I expected from the title. I mean, this place has everything. A baseball field, hotels, water slides, fountains, an arcade, a medieval castle. There's something for everyone. The castle looks cool, but the guy put an escalator next to it. It reminds me of when Triple H had that King stuff on, but had a water bottle in his hand that throws everything off. <laughs> the escalators don't quite reach the top, so if this stadium existed in real life and had this in it, you would have to do some uncharted shit just to reach the castle. Ah! Jurassic Park. I'm not surprised at all considering the fact that the game gives you freaking dinosaurs. Hey man, I'm glad to see Littlefoot's back on his feet, especially after the 7,000 Land Before Time movies. Good for him. Is this park any good? You bet your ass it is. Now I found this one on Reddit and we have to use pictures because like I said before, you can't search anything. This guy uploaded the unholy creation you're looking at right now. This just shows that if you wanna go absolutely ape shit in this stadium creator, you can. It honestly looks like you tried to make something at first with the stands and concessions and the two basketball courts. But then he just said, you know what, screw this and dumped the whole toy box on the field and drew Super Saiyan hair with the outfield walls. Those outfield walls are so sharp, I'm pretty sure I can cut through our dimension. But what about me? Can I make anything crazy? Well, check this out. Boo, you stink! Yes, yes, I know, it looks like the generic tutorial park. But look, the stands are gone. And that's because this park's been overtaken by dinosaurs. And this cow. There are seats. Well, you have to get to them. How do you get to them? <laughs> I'm glad you asked. First, you have to climb up these boards of wood, then climb up these three sets of stairs. Be careful not to fall off. Once you reach the top, there's a maze waiting for you. At the top of the maze, there's a portal. The portal transports you to a castle. Enter the castle, defeat the king, reach the top, jump through this portal, and the portal leads you to the stands that hover 100 feet in the sky. Enjoy the game. Now, this is silly, and I had to make up my own lore for this, but I'll try and make something a little halfway decent. This is Empty Tundra Park. Please don't make fun of the name. The concept is, is that this was a normal town before the heavy snowfall came and buried everyone underneath snow. Heavy snowfall field, I could have named it that. I'm so stupid. No stands, no fans, no life spans. There's no one around to watch the game. If you ever wanted to hear a game with no sound, well, here you go. And that misses one and one. In front of the changeup, and he can't keep it fair. Two strikes on him now. Line drive base hit. Man, that's surreal. The first offering on its way. Now a ball line toward the alley in left center. And this is down. And he's done it. And the winning run is across to score. Yay. Do a barrel roll. Honestly, I think I can make a better stadium, but this one's fine for now. It just shows what a novice like me can do with a little bit of time. Overall, Stadium Creator is a good feature and I'm very glad it's in the game. There are some things they can expand upon in the future, like being able to change bullpen locations, add domes, loosen up on the restrictions for online play, and oh yeah, actually have the ability to search for stuff. 
That's important. But good job though. Now work on those offline modes. I'm sure many of you have heard of the Fight Night games before, or even the UFC games. But there's one EA Sports combat game that no one really knows or talks about. It's a boxing game called Facebreaker. Now, EA Sports has obscure games. Like, did you know they made cricket games? Yes, that's games. With an S at the end. Or how about bass fishing? Or even cheese rolling 2005? That one was a personal favorite of mine. The thing is, those games have a small niche of players anyway. Is it any surprise you don't know EA made a fishing game? Not really. Is it surprising that EA made a boxing game and you probably haven't heard of it? A little bit. So what's the deal with this game? It's bizarre because it comes out smack dab in the middle of the sixth generation, aka the realistic sweaty brown and gray generation. This is notable because Facebreaker is the exact opposite of that. It's a super zany arcade fighter similar to Ready to Rumble. EA didn't really release many arcade games back then, and if they did, they were relegated to PSN or Xbox Live, like NBA Jam and NFL Blitz. The mainline releases took a more realistic approach, like the Skate series. Throw in the fact that EA retired the EA Sports Big Label, which was the label that was used for arcade games, makes this such an anomaly of a game. I mean, just look at this lineup. Madden, FIFA, NBA Live, Facebreaker. Looks a little out of place, doesn't it? You know, let's jump right into it. Facebreaker is a very simple game. There's no hour long, overly explanatory tutorial to guide you on how to play the game, nor do you really need one. Right before you fight, you get a couple of slides to show what button does what, and that's all. You have your high punches, low punches, special punch, a throw, and a counter. Seems simple. All right, I have my guy. I'll choose medium since this is my first time playing. 12 seconds later. Oh my God, he's kicking my ass, damn. I could barely get a hit in. I don't think I've ever gotten my ass beat on medium difficulty so bad in my whole life. If this is medium, I literally can't imagine fighting on the hardest difficulty. Imagine a little kid playing this. His parents would have to seek counseling for him because when you get your ass beat like this, you feel it through the TV. Okay, so what's going on here? Is the game really this hard or am I just crap at it? It's a mix of both, really. Facebreaker comes with a manual. Do you remember manuals? In the manual, the controls are explained more. So you do have a special punch, but if you chain together enough strikes, you do special er punches. The bar on the bottom fills up when you land punches. Fill up the bar completely and you could do a facebreaker that ends the fight immediately. This can end fights in like less than 20 seconds if you pull it off. Good luck hitting a face breaker on higher difficulties, by the way. You have a better chance of doing shit like that in real life than you do in the game. Holding a punch button charges your punch, but it also works as a counter. If I'm holding high punch, I'll counter high punches, for example. Holding L1 and R1 changes the counter, so now you could do a parry or a push. Also, each character has a special attack that stuns an opponent. For the character I'm using, kick, 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 kick. Kikoa! Yeah, him. If I hit three charge punches in a row, my opponent gets stunned. So yeah, there's a little bit more to this game besides mashing buttons. Don't get me wrong, you're not gonna see this game at EVO or anything. So now that we know how to play, we can try the game's main mode, Brawl for All. Don't worry, you don't have to fight Butterbean at the end. I'm gonna play on medium difficulty because I'm not gonna torture myself no matter how much the game insults me. It's a mode where you fight people and win belts with each belt being harder to get. You come across the whole roster on this playthrough. Hmm, maybe I should reword that. You get to fight the whole roster on this playthrough, and the characters are fine. They're not outstanding, but I remember most of them, so that has to count for something, right? Each belt has its own arena, and I like the arenas. An arcade, an asylum, my favorite being this pirate arena because you see these two crabs with boxing gloves fighting, and I think it's just hilarious. You have the same ring girl, and she has tit physics, and the camera zooms in on them a good portion of the time. I mean, is this really necessary? This game has the EA Freestyle branding on it, which is supposed to be family friendly. Even if that wasn't the case, it's also pointless. I mean, what pervy idiot is gonna sit there and jerk off to the ring girl from Facebreaker besides people who look and act like this? Prepare for your doom. With each new opponent, you also get these little cutscenes of your opponent talking shit before the fight starts. Knock, knock. Um, who's there? You, you who? You suck! 
It reminds me of Crash Bandicoot 3 where the boss characters talk shit before you play a level. Shove off, or I'll roast you. Fights are three three minute rounds and the first are three knockdowns or a face breaker wins. If neither of those things happen in three rounds, then you go into sudden death where the next knockdown would win the fight. This is completely unfair at times because there are moments where I have two knockdowns and my opponent only has one or even none. Then we go into the sudden death round and I lose because I get knocked down once. Complete unfair nonsense. The fighters get their faces bruised up pretty badly, hence the name of the game. Some of these look pretty brutal, look at these. One really cool thing about this game is that each boxer behaves differently. Like this guy right here I'm fighting, he's different, he keeps his guard up all the time. If you keep failing a fight, you get a tip for defeating them, which is pretty cool. Remember the guy who smacked my ass all around the arena earlier? Well he's pretty easy once you know how he works. He charges from way back, so when he misses, then it's time to pay his ass back from earlier. So if you don't beat your opponent in three tries, you have to go back to the previous opponent. So it's three and out, much like when the New York Jets have the ball on offense. So playing Brawl for All is challenging to say the least. So I'm beating guys and I get the first two belts. It's been challenging, but it's been nothing I couldn't handle so far. I'm going for the third belt and then I run into Israel Adesanya over here. This guy is freaking impossible. This guy's name is Spin, but they should change his name to Bounce because he'll be bouncing your ass all around like Sonic in a casino night zone. Damn, how is this medium difficulty? On hard, does he come through the TV and beat your ass up in real life? I can't imagine this being any more difficult. I lost all my attempts, so now I gotta go back. Thank God the previous opponent isn't that hard. I eventually got a face breaker on him. Don't ask me how, I just got lucky. After him, we get this big guy who reminds me of the abominable snowman in the Looney Tunes cartoons. Do you wanna come and play with me? You know what, let's make a long story short here. He beats me and now I have to fight freaking this guy again. It was at this point I almost turned the damn game off, but I persevere and I beat both of them. I continue on and get to the final belt. The last guy is this insane dude. He was rather easy, shockingly. And that's face break. Wait, a new belt just appeared. Zoo? Who's in here? The monkey! <laughs> yep, you spend this belt beating up a monkey. <laughs> the monkey's not really that original. He doesn't fling shit at you or anything, and he's rather easy. Once you beat him, finally, that's face break. Whoa, whoa, what's this? Okay, so the real final boss is this iron giant looking cliche ass robot. I'm just gonna assume he'll be easy like the monkey. Two hours later. This fight is the most unfair shit you can possibly do in any video game ever. There's this attack that stuns you if you're near a corner and there's no way to avoid it. He has missiles, a special throw where he lifts you up and throws you. You're gonna have to ice your damn thumb after playing this or it's gonna look like Popeye's forearms. After hours, and I mean literally hours, I finally beat this damn thing. And after all that, you get a final weirdly animated cutscene. Way to blow it out there, Tiki. Watch your mouth. Now you know that I do not approve of that kind of language. Vulgarities are ignorant and disrespectful. That's okay, Tiki. Just, just don't let it happen again. You little Yeah, I guess the monkey was the robot's pet or something. He even made a spank the monkey joke. No one spanks my monkey and lives to tell the tale. Now that I've been it, there's really nothing else to do besides play Brawl for All with every other character in the game. <laughs> Uh, I, I guess you can watch the Madden 09 trailer at like 10 frames per second. The first sports game that adapts to you. Does it adapt to being thrown into trash? You can also create a boxer. Wait, this game has game face? Oh my god, it does! I made a whole ass video on games that import your face. I didn't know this game had it. I'm just gonna plug in and use my eye toy because I'm too lazy to get pictures from that video.
three days later. Wow, that's actually pretty good. <laughs> Especially compared to these high tech games. I'm pretty sure you could just download pictures of anyone and put anyone in the game. Oh, wow. Uh, okay. Oh my God, he's a monstrosity. I love him. This is the man right here that's gonna take on Brawl for All on its hardest difficulty. Or not, I can't even win the first damn belt. And I tried my absolute hardest. Sorry guys, but I'm not gonna take 20 years off my life to beat this. It's just not gonna happen. Overall, Facebreaker is an old school game. You start it up and there's just game. You even unlock the arenas and the fighters by just playing the game. No microtransactions or any other Scrooge McDuck, Mr. Krabs money grubbing shit like there is today. It's all about the money. It's a fun game with fun, albeit stereotypical characters, nice looking arenas, and really good looking visuals. However, the game is ball breaking hard, man. And you know what? I kind of get why they did this. Facebreaker has no content besides the Brawl for All. So to artificially extend the game, they made it super hard, even on the easiest mode. While it is fun, the lack of content and brutal difficulty make this not fun. The game just goes against what it's trying to be. Like I've mentioned earlier, EA Freestyle, in their words, playful, inclusive, casual, and easy to pick up for kids and parents, women and men, and casual and hardcore sports fans of all ages. Yeah, this game tries to do this with its simplistic controls and cartoony characters, but it goes against this with its insane difficulty and shit like zooming in on the ring girl's tits. Like, I still don't get why that's in the game. Although I don't think this is bad as a 15 though. Like, come on, dude, did this game bang your wife? Facebreaker went on to sell terribly. It's hard to find exact sales numbers, but Wikipedia mentions that this game only sold 52,000 copies in a month. And VG Charts, I, I know, I know, it's not the most reliable, but VG Charts has it at 580,000 units, which sounds okay-ish, but those are the lifetime sales with all the units combined. And also this game was on the Wii, where anything sold. Googling the title of the game brings you to some Path of Exile stuff before the actual game. There seems to be no fan base or cult following behind this game either. EA probably thought highly of this game because before release they made these little audition things that showed off the character's personality. Sure, and to play big Russian guy, always with stereotypes, you American all the same. And they were posted on Madden's YouTube channel of all things. Facebreaker had the potential, but now it's just a curious case of obscure sports gaming history. You'll have to excuse me. My chariot awaits. Coming, Mom! With the rise of cinematic storytelling in video games, sports games would naturally follow and put their own spin on it. And by own spin, I mean getting Spike Lee to direct a story. Yes, that's right. Spike Lee directs the story Live in the Dream in NBA 2K16. I'm not being funny. That's how it's spelled. You know what? This sounds at the very least entertaining to me. So let's stop with all the suspense. Let's jump right in. NBA 2K16 has the ability to scan your face into the game with the PlayStation camera, and we're definitely using this to create our guy. The last time I did this, I looked like a monstrosity, but getting this thing to work is the real dream I'm trying to live. And yeah, I do know better this time. We momentarily lost track of your head. Please completely fill the window with your face. We momentarily lost track of your head. We momentarily lost track of your head. Please completely fill the window with your face. We momentarily lost track. We momentarily lost. We moment. We momentarily Man. lost track of your head. Man, that shit pissed me off, man. Eons later, and I finally get it done. Well, consider me electrifying because I look like Frankenstein's monster. This right here is the face of our story, y'all. So the story is centered on our player, Freak. And I'm not making that up. It's spelled F-R-E-Q, but I wouldn't blame you if you thought it was spelled F-R-E-A-K. We follow his journey through high school, college, and eventually the NBA. Freak has his sister Cece and his mom and dad along the way who are supportive of Freak and only want what's best for him. Money, hard work is always rewarded, right? Yep, just like our parents. 32 years and they both still at the post office. <laughs> Brought us up right here in Harlem, USA. The projects. 
Girl, this is definitely not the hood. I can tell because the court is cleaner than this transition, emptier than my DMs, and the rims still have the nets on them. And you know what? Let's address the elephant in the room here. Our player is supposed to be black. Your whole family's black. The odd thing is you can create your own guy any way you want to. Make him any color you want. Our guy came out kinda white somehow, even though I'm browner than a third place trophy. The point I'm trying to make is this guy being blood related to these people is odd to say the very least. Even if you wanted to take the, oh, he's adopted route, you can't because the mom has a scene later where she mentions how Freak was kicking to the beat of the music when she was pregnant with him. So my husband Pete put headphones on my belly and played reggae music. Hence the name Frequency Vibration. <laughs> we shortened it to Freak. So yeah, we're already off to a bizarre start. Boom! What else see? see? <laughs> this guy. Yo! I still got the skills though. <laughs> Too bad you got kicked off the squad. Man, I think the best thing about this face is that I have so many good candidates for the thumbnail. <laughs> Vic, you are no good on the curve bomb. Let's just keep it 100. Two times 50. Wow. You see how she doing mathematics on me though? This is a tax on my character. As you already know, I'm an upright citizen with high morals and values. This guy is Vic. He's your best friend and is mostly the comic relief slash annoyance. Up is down, down is up, left is right, right is left. Wait, how to? <laughs> you know what? It's all good in the hood. You two know I'm dyslexic. It's dyslexic. Yo, you twisted for show. This guy is like a bowl of frosted flakes, but in human form. He's insane. Keep forgetting, I'm an FOF. And do tell, what is an FOF? A friend of freak. <laughs> uh, this dialogue's gonna take 10 years off my life. Anyway, we have three high school games to play. We are far from tip -off. Tonight, it's your Parkside Dragons pitted against the Fairview Tornado. Fast break, freak, do a dunk. Oh, or do that. I'm sure that'll make the highlight reel. The WNBA highlight reel, that is. Buzzer beater. Look at these stats, baby. They're they're not really all that impressive, actually. Everyone knows the respect that Villanova has in the basketball world, and our NBA roster boasts some of the most talented and passionate players in the NBA. Just look at the current play of former Wildcat Kyle Lowry. This could be you, freak. No, this will be you. We have all these recruiters who are, for some reason, super impressed with my whole eight point score in that last game. While we're on the subject, let's talk about the gameplay. It's much like an all-star game. Neither one matters. What's the point of playing this game if the actual game parts don't influence the outcome in any way? The gameplay is literally just filler in between the cutscenes. No matter how bad you play, the story continues as if you're this young up and coming prospect that's playing at an elite level. To prove my point, here's me messing around while I eat a Taco Bell nacho fries box. Aaron Rodgers. Tom Brady. Patrick Mahomes. There's a hole in my shorts, there's a hole in my shorts. Don't look, my dick's out. Just kidding, shit. Jamarcus Russell. Why did that go in? And if you join the Wildcat Nation, not only will you be making a great decision, but quite frankly, it will get you to the professional level. See, look, after playing like a complete moron, the story still goes on the same. So from here on out, gameplay stuff will be ignored and we'll just assume Freak is playing at an elite level even though he's just standing there. So after the high school games, the Freak crew is at home ready to record a video. Hi everyone. I'd like to thank everyone from my coaches to my teammates. You guys taught me the importance of teamwork and working together, so thank you. I'd like to give a big shout out to my main man, Vic, holding the camera down. I ain't gonna ask where you got the camera, but thanks. And I'd like to thank my twin, Cece for being a great role model in my life. Ugh. These two are twins? Maybe Freak was exposed to radiation as a kid. We have to choose a university. This is the first of only two points in the game where you actually can have an influence on a cutscene. I choose Texas because everything's bigger in Texas and hopefully that includes my likes and views. They say everything is bigger in this state and I feel I will be too. I will be the newest audition too. The University of Texas at Austin. Yes! <laughs> oh, 
Longhorn Nation. Okay, okay. I'm here, bro. Hey, I'm about to lasso me some hotties, though. Hey, CC, what up, what up? Go you cut off the me. camera, bro. We're oh, going to be rolling oh, forever. Oh, if we... Okay, I'm not going to lie. That made me smile. You can think whatever you want about the story of this, but it looks like they had a lot of fun shooting this. We move on to play amazingly at college. Then we have the crew discussing about whether or not to go pro after our first college season. Mr. Pagnati, the agent I was telling you about, he's in the room too. How you doing, ma'am? I'm good, nice to meet you. What a pleasure to finally meet the queen mother of this young, talented man, even if only by telephone. We have an agent now. This is Dom Pagnati. If you're a Spike Lee film connoisseur, you'd recognize Dom from He Got Game. Let's cut to the chase. Leaving college early now and entering this year's NBA draft is the right move right now. I was talking to my boy Vic the other day. Why? He, and he was making a lot of sense. He thinks I should leave early too. You know what? I've, I, no, no, I've kept quiet this whole time and I also think that Freak should join them. Who the fuck are you? Oh yeah, Freak has a girlfriend now. I swear I didn't skip any cutscenes. This is just a thing now, out of nowhere. Essentially, the agent and the girlfriend want Freak to go pro, the parents want him to have an education, and Freak is just like, I don't know! Well, we're at the NBA draft now. You can't skip it, so you have to slowly watch each draft pick until we get to pick number 29, which is when we're finally selected by the Nets. So I guess Freak decided to join the draft. Once again, I didn't skip anything. So much shit's happening off screen. We sign with the team. Vic continues to act like a goof. And we have a press conference. I guess I will take some questions now. Yes, ma'am. How did you get the nickname Freak? Have you seen his face? Okay, so we have our first game and I'm not even starting. Guess I'll ride it out on a bell. Whoa, a little close there, buddy. You're not even watching the game. What's over here? What's up there? Oh, hi. Bench riding sucks. So I eventually get in the game, and like I mentioned before, none of this matters for the story, but I'll show you Freak's first points. You know, he's a great young player, and even- And that's the very first basket right there, folks, of what is hopefully a very long and, and a very prosperous career from day. Halftime passes, and I have to comment that it's interesting that video games still can't get hair right. These cheerleaders have detailed marks on their body, which show the detail that went into making them. But they all look like they have wigs on! MLB The Show 21 just showed next-gen footage, and Fernando Tatis Jr. looks like he uses cement for hair gel. Like, what's up with this? Anyway, we lose. We have a meeting with team owner. They couldn't give this guy a name. Local kid makes good. You know, it kind of reminds me of when I took my tech stock public and I rang the New York Stock Exchange bell and my mom's friends called her up and said, Maggie, is that your son on Bloomberg News this morning ringing the bell? And my mom says, yes, sir, Bob, it was him. Oh, was my God. Mom, Does this meeting by any chance have to do with Vic Van Leer? My best friend was a guy named Isidore. <laughs> yeah. We called him Izzy. I mean, Izzy was taking second year college calculus courses as a high school sophomore, right? Straight. <sighs> okay, so what happened to this dude, Izzy? Because he's dope. <laughs> no, not dope. Dead. Sorry, uh, poor timing on my part, but can someone make gifts of these reactions? Thank you. You shouldn't be Brother Vic's keeper, freak. <laughs> Would a brother go looking for trouble? and put your career and your livelihood at risk by getting into fights at nightclubs and seedy after-hour joints and then scream to the media, yeah, it's all good, I'm an F.O.F., friend of Freak. It's all misunderstanding. Okay, I think you get it at this point. The owner thinks Freak should get rid of Vic. The owner shows Freak and tells him of the fights and whatnot Vic gets in and how Vic just uses Freak's name whenever it's convenient for him. The owner drops the ban hammer on Vic. Also, this scene has the best line or the worst line. I'll leave it up to you to decide. V! G, G, Vic, gotta go. The main annoyance here is that they keep hammering home the same point a million times and it ends up being way too long. If you keep riding shotgun with Vic, you're gonna go broke quick, fast, okay, and in cool. a hurry. So Vic is done. Understood. History. 
Don't be a hero. Cut that zero. Okay, I got it. Don't be a hero. Cut that zero. All right, all right. Vic, gotta go. All right, I get it. Later on, we're talking money. Now, you've certainly made some money so far, freak, but it's time we make more money. I'm talking movies, TVs, endorsements, even your own brand Jordan sneakers. I care about the game first, Dom. And we got to set new goals and bigger goals, OK? I'm talking all-star game. I'm talking dunk contest. When was the last time you saw an NBA great in a dunk contest, huh? I'm talking first team all NBA, first team all defensive team. Whoa, 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 Dom. I'm a bench riding rookie. Popcorn in a microwave sees more minutes than I do. I don't even think Freak can touch the backboard, let alone dunk. And he throws up so many bricks you would think he's building in Fortnite. What about social media? Yvette, great idea. Social media. Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. Let's kick it up a notch. www.freakandvibing.com I wonder if that website works. No, it doesn't. Did you set up a website without consulting me? Yeah. When did this happen? Last week. I love you, but I got no time to waste, and you're out there busy doing whatever it is you're doing. Whatever I'm doing? You know what? I'm really sick and tired of the disrespect. This is Team Freak, not the Dom Pagnati I Italian American Opera. Cece, calm down, all right? Dom here, he's just trying to take us to the next level. Look, Ming Ching. Oh! I don't even know why you're here when your job is to look good in chef. Cece, chill. Freak eventually de-escalates everything. As for now, I want to focus on the court. And we'll discuss some of your ideas at a later date, understood? Yeah, we're cooling the gang, bro. That's all you got to say. Essentially, get right or get going. Yeah, I don't have time to be teaching you guys how to work together. It either starts now or I find it elsewhere. Squashed? Squashed. Zucchini. You get it? Because he's Italian. He watches The Godfather and eats spaghetti and some other Italian stereotypes. Dom's strategy of branding eventually pays off because he gets some his own Jordans. Let me tell you, Dom has to be the best agent ever because I have no clue how he got freaked this deal considering he never starts. Imagine if like, I don't know, Brian Scalabrini came out with Jordans. <laughs> like Christmas and my birthday on the same day. Oh. Yeah, you, you got the wrong color scheme. That's, I, I'm on the other New York team. Hey. Whatever. Later on, Freak, Vic, and Yvette are hanging out and Freak is playing video games. And I'm putting invisible air quotes around the word playing. Take your man here. He's playing his hair video game is to not address the reason why his brand Jordan sneakers are sitting on store shelves collecting dust. Ooh. Yeah, well, maybe if they would have got the color right, that wouldn't have been the case. But Cece got people out here laughing at you, fam. Now, just let me take care of everything. You the CEO, I'm the CFO, Chief Flossing Officer. You hit me with that bread, and I got you. CC. How y'all doing? Uh, CC. Freak, can I talk to you for a second? Yeah, what up? In private? CC. Go ahead. Yeah, so another argument breaks out, and it's hard not to be frustrated at this point because it seems everyone lives their own lives through Freak in a way. Vic and Yvette leave, and Freak has a moment with Cece. Yeah, their love might be flawed, but it's true. What you need to understand is I don't need you to protect me anymore. I don't mind the people closest to me leeching off me. Yes, you do leech off me, and I leech off you too. Always had a good judge of character, even before I was born. Remember? Because I chose to come in this world with you. I don't think you could choose that, but the sentiment is nice. Later on, Vic and Freak have a car ride, and these never go well. Vic is playing his own rap song, which is probably not copyrighted, but I'm gonna be safe and not play it. Just take my word that this guy sucks. I'm just, I'm thinking about how fortunate you are. You know how, how blessed you are. You know, you, you grew up with a mom's and a dad, both parents. My mom's died from that flu. That sick parting gift my dad left my mom's. No, oh, I feel you, Vic. But it's, it's all right, man. You know, your moms and pops are good people. You know, may they rest in power. So you're gonna patronize me now? What kind of response is that? Oh, Vic, Vic, Vic. What are you doing right now? You got everything, don't you, freak? What do I have? Nothing. Man, I ain't got nothing. Yeah, Yo, you sound like you on some. Welch's sour grape right now, man. You jelly? I ain't jealous of you, freak. I think you are jealous of me. <laughs> oh, wait, you serious? Let me laugh even harder. <laughs> I think you jealous of the way that I'm laying it down with these hottie hotties on Instagram while you stuck at home with your one blazing beauty. 
But don't get heated because you went behind my back to get at Yvette, and she turned you down, B. Hmm? Use my name as a coupon. Reel them all in. Hey, sweet thing. Hey, sweetie pie. Hey, shawty, you know I'm a F.O.F., a friend, a freak. And then when they husbands and boyfriends start coming after you and you want to play the macho man role, start throwing hands, scrapping and fighting, who's the one that has to bail you out of jail? Huh? Who's the one that has to pay these lawyers in six-figure settlements, huh? Me! Not you. Oh, no, not you, Vic. Who's the one stuck with the bill, Vic? Huh? Me! Not you, but me! I wear that hat? Dirt bike Don. <laughs> you remember him? Dude who was robbing everybody in the towers? He ran up on you and told you to run it. Man. Oh man, he wanted your Yo, no, nah, Vic. Oh, he wanted Vic. so Vic, bad. No, we were fighting, all right? We were fighting. Okay, then he reached in this coat. And when he pulled, <laughs> yeah. we struggled, man. Yeah. And when he pulled back, he fell down stairway by himself that's right, that's and right, cracked his right. head in two. Oh, man, hey, calm, down, calm down, calm down. Yo, it's all good. It's all good, fam. I took care of all the loose ends when you ran down the flight of steps, left me holding the bag. Who was it that saved the day? Me! It was me! Victor Van Leer, who cleaned your dirty plate for you! You're a clean freak. You're clean it in the board of health. Cause of who? Cause of me! You got all this because of me. It was me. Remember what I said about everyone being annoying because they all revolved their lives around Freak? Well, this guy is the number one culprit of doing that. Oh, and he tried to bang Freak's girl too. This guy has no redeeming qualities in my opinion. Let me borrow this here ride, man. Yo, how many whips you got anyway? Man, come on. Yeah, you are right, I don't even wanna know. I need this back at the end of the season in the same condition. <laughs> hey, I won't let you down, man. I do have a feeling we're gonna let you down, Vic. We have a meeting with team owner about Vic. Vic is even insulting other athletes on Twitter now. Myself, the front office, and the coaches are not satisfied with the adjustments you've made in your life off the court. I personally warned you about the company you keep and we're fed up with the late nights and showing up late to shoot arounds and the bad press and the incident at the nightclub. The next move is freaks, it always has been. Question is, is he ready and willing to do what needs to be done? Freak, you gotta handle your business. Okay, we've all said our piece. You might cut me off as your manager, but I will always be your sister. So when this is on you, I might not like it, but I will respect any decision you make. Now, I'm gonna call my guy at Apollo Jets. I'm gonna get us a private plane for this tour. I promise you, you're gonna love the free agency experience. Wait, 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 wait. We're free agents now? I thought we were given a choice. I swear I didn't skip anything here. Now we have free agency and it already doesn't make any kind of logical sense because why are the Nets interested in me? The most interested at that. They're the ones who just released me and now they want me back? This makes no sense. We go through offers and we sign with the Nets just for hilarity's sake. And this is the second of two things that have an effect on a cutscene. I've decided to choose the Brooklyn Nets. Woo! Yo, fool, where you been? I've been trying to call you. Mr. Freak. Yo, who's this? This is Officer Vasquez with the 9th Precinct. Ah, yes, the very memorable character, Officer Vasquez, gets a name. But the team owner doesn't. Put down the phone, and I don't want to hear it get picked up until Victor Van Leer is on the give phone. Me the phone. Put Vic on the phone. Mr. Freak, Mr. Van Leer was killed in a car accident. What's going on? Remember what I said about letting him down? Yeah, six feet underground. This is Cece. This is Freak's manager. Who am I speaking with? Hey, yes, look, we're going to need somebody to come down and identify Mr. Van Leer. 
Uh, eyewitnesses say that he was involved in a car chase. Two cars were chasing him, and as the chase escalated, he eventually lost control and crashed. <laughs> CC and Freak take it back to the core where this all started. Yeah, I'm gonna miss my brother Victor. Deep down, he was a good person at heart, but he was never quite right. Something was always off with him, yeah. even when we were little growing up. Yeah, I know, I know, but I loved him anyway. I knew he was trying to take advantage of our friendship, but I didn't care. Well, that's one way to look at it. Freak buys his parents a house and a vacation, and that's the story. Dear Freak. What the hell? By the time you read this letter, I'll be long gone wrote this letter because it's the only way I think my voice will ever be heard. This piece of yellow paper is the only way I'll ever get any of you to stop, listen, and really get to know me. Okay, so get this. The ghost of Vic walks onto the court and starts monologuing this note about his death. I can't believe this is in a basketball game. This moment and this story in general is surprisingly decisive. You obviously have the people who see it as a joke, but you have a surprising amount of people who think this scene is emotionally touching. There's nothing wrong with that, but I'm definitely the former. Vic does nothing but use Freak's name every chance he gets and every opportunity he gets. He's an asshole. He hits on Freak's girl behind his back. He calls Freak his first NBA team. He tries to guilt trip Freak and possibly even blackmail him. Oh yeah, and he crashed his car too. Uh, just saying. You know, honestly, by the end of this, I just wanted to cover a baseball bat with Icy Hot and shove it up his ass. Also, this is clearly a suicide note, but the officer mentions that Vic died from a car crash that came from two cars chasing him. It didn't sound like it was police cars chasing him, so how can it really be a suicide? Also, his monologue goes on for over eight minutes. You mean to tell me that all of that fit on this little piece of paper? He must have wrote that in Times New Roman with like 0.000001 sized font. And that is living the dream. After the story, you pick up playing my career like normal. The thing is, if you want to play my career without all this nonsense, you can't. The first year of your my career is always going to be tied to this stuff. So that means majority of your first year is going to be simulated. Also, the freak name follows you throughout the whole my career, which is the biggest offense you could possibly make. This is bizarre. I think that's a good way to summarize this. Having a Spike Lee movie in your game is already a weird move. You can make that move even weirder by using the facial scan feature to create this glorious bastard. The story and the characters are not super interesting. There are some moments that legit make me smile, but often than not, I'm frustrated or laughing for the wrong reasons. Gameplay is completely worthless and you could just stand there aimlessly and the story progresses. Why not just make a movie instead? Honestly, just watch He Got Game.